right away. And we here at Judah want to present this series so sort of like based upon Ephesians chapter 6. And with the key verse in verse 17, it says, And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And when Paul was talking here, he was already jumping in using an illustration of the armor of God. And the sword of the Spirit he was talking about, and the armor that he was talking about was that of a Roman soldier which was a dominant soldier in their day. Now, the sword that Paul talks about is not the medieval broad sword that we so accompany with the pictures that we see of the sword of the Spirit. But the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, was likened to the Roman short sword. The Roman short sword was so fierce in its day that it earned a reputation for being the sword that conquered the world. It was a short, kind of broad sword. I mean a broad, but kind of stout um, this is a replica of it, but it's actually a little bit bigger than this, a little broader than this, you know, a little fat. Now, what they used it for was, it was used in close quarter combat, it was exceptional in close quarter combat, and it was so good with the thick point that it has right here, and being double-edged, that it could pierce right through armor. And it was important that a Roman soldier mastered his sword and knew how to use his sword. So important that they went to training every day. A Roman soldier trained with his sword every day. And not just with his sword, but they had some other swords, some practice swords that they trained with, which were twice as heavy as the regular sword. So they were training with these swords and these shields that are twice as heavy as the normal ones. And they did this every day. They trained every day. It was so important to the Roman army that they built camps they, that to train in. And the camps that they built were quite expensive and extensive, quite big camps. Some even were like big as gymnasiums with riding stables where they would, they would practice riding, practice fighting. And they would do this every day, every morning. And along with the sword, I talked about the, the, the shield. They would use, in battle, they would use a sword, but they'd also use a shield. I don't make fun of my shield now. Now, I built the shield as a replica. They use a folded shield, which would be made out of plywood that was folded and curved. But they would hold the sword in their right hand, hold the shield in their left hand, hold the shield to about eyes level, and they would take their left foot forward, right foot back, and brace for the impact of the enemy clashing against them. And while the enemy was being pushed off with their, their shield, they would stab with their sword. And the shield also gave them a focused view, a focused line of view, while protecting their entire body. And the sword was a perfect complement to the shield would be used for stabbing while, you, while the enemy is trying to get at them and being blocked. Just a quick stab, quick joke in the Hindu vernacular. Now, the sword was also used in one of the things that the Roman army was touted for for being so magnificent, magnificent at doing is building strongholds or building fortified camps. And the sword would be important in this that they would use it as it's broad, as it's stout, as it's so stout to dig trenches. They would also hack down trees and dig foundations for the trees to go in as poles or to build as walls around the camp. And they would set up tents around the, set, set up tents inside of it. And not just set up tents, but they would also set up an altar in the middle of it. And so, how does this relate to me as the internet age as the Facebook age, Instagram, technology, you know. How does the Word of God relate to me in this age? Well, one, the Word of God, just like the example of the, the Roman soldiers, is able to defend you from the enemy, able to defend you from the lies of the enemy. Jesus, when he was tempted, he used the Word of God to fend off the enemy, to poke through the holes, to poke through the, the, the armor 
of the enemy, which was he wanted him to, he wanted Jesus to be tempted by the things that Jesus' flesh would have wanted. But instead, he poked holes through the theories and through the thoughts of what the enemy was trying to put in him. Now, also, the Roman soldier would practice this every day. We see a picture also for us that we need to practice the word of God, the word of God needs to be ingrained in us. And not just as an offensive weapon, as I showed to poke holes, but also as a defensive weapon, because it, 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 it was used, like, like we said, it was used to help build foundation, to help put walls around. The word of God gives us standards for us to live by. And these standards are things that allow and protect us from the onslaught of the enemy, protect us from just going out there and just doing any old thing that may harm us. Because God, his infinite wisdom, has already set out boundaries and set out places that he said, you know what? I know my child, if my child goes to this place or my child goes to that place, they'll get hurt. So what I'm going to do is set up walls, set up boundaries and give them wisdom that they won't be hurt. The word of God also produces pillars. It sets about pillars in our lives. And the pillars that it sets about are our core beliefs. What we believe, what we think, how we see the world. Also, what the, Bible, what the Word of God does in association with faith is our faith in the Word of God, which is the shield, it gives us focus. Like I said, I had the shield up here and I gave you a good Bible ready focus. It gives you focus in life, it gives you direction, it gives you a good perception of what you need to do. Now, as well as the sword. This picture of the sword, the sword was carried at the battle and at the close quarter combat was where the sword excelled. The word of God is able to, to be in the most personable, the most closest places in your life. Things that are and able to, to deal with personal issues that are so close to you that, that nobody else, no other book, you know, there are a lot of self-help books, there are a lot of things, but the word of God is sharper, is quicker than any, any, any double-edged sword is what the Bible says. And it's able to, to, to give you insight. And even in, in Psalms 19, 119, in 119, yes. In Psalms 119 it says, the word of God is a light to my feet and a light to my path. It's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. What that says is, as a light to your feet, the Bible helps you, the word of God reveals who you are, helps you to discover it regulates who you are as a person. And then it helps to tell you which way that you should go as that person because it's a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. So the word of God is essential to us and we need to study it and we need to, to be masters of it. The same way the Roman soldiers were masters of it. And when you take the word of God and you use it in all these combinations as the Roman soldier did, you can build strongholds in your life. And what a stronghold is, is a stronghold is a place where you're protected, a place where you're strengthened, a place where you can, can engage in worship with God and you can be safe. Now there are many other characteristics of the Word of God and many other attributes and many other advantages that we're going to deal, deal later in this series called Sword Life. This series is going to last for four weeks and I'm going to teach you the first three weeks and on the fourth week, we're going to have a live question and answer period. So get your questions ready. You know, you can even send some of them in to ahead of time to Julia Experience on our Facebook page. And feel free to be interactive and ask, you know, what's going on with Sword Life. Hope you're enjoying our series called Sword Life, which is based on Ephesians chapter 6 and 17, talking about the Word of God as the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God is indeed the sword of the Spirit. In order to handle it properly and use this sword to this most effective way, you must have the Spirit of God in you. And the Spirit of God is available to all those that believe and have Jesus Christ as their Savior. So I implore you, I invite you, if you don't know how Jesus as your personal Savior, get Him. And we extend an invitation to you right now. Just say, Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. And it's just that simple. Now, for those of you who are who know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I would plead with you to get deeper in the Spirit 
and allow the Spirit of God to take you to new realms and new places of revelation and understanding His Word and becoming a good soldier able to handle the sword of the Spirit.